Welcome back everybody. This video we're going to be talking about structs. And let me tell you, structs are one of my favorite things in C programming. They're really super cool. They basically allow us to encapsulate numerous pieces of data or values inside of one variable. So to go through an example, let's say we wanted to create a rectangle or something. Well, we might have a length and we might have a width. And that's not too crazy, but if you had numerous rectangles, you'd have to have two variables for every single rectangle. And that's just a very simple thing we're trying to create. What if we had a more complex structure and as a result, we just had numerous and numerous variables we had to keep track of? Well, with a struct, we could basically combine these into one data type called rectangle, for example. So to do that, what we need to do is outside of main, we can say struct rectangle, give it a name, and then inside of these curly braces, put these two variables. So that is the simplest way to make a struct. So now when we create a variable, instead of saying int length or int width, what we do is we say the type is actually rectangle, and then we give it a name, my rectangle, whatever you want to call it. And before the rectangle type, we actually have to say struct. So this is how we declare a struct. And we can give it values by setting it equal to, and then using curly braces and putting two values in here. So we could say five and 10. So it's basically a way to group a length and a width together inside of one variable, my rectangle. Okay, so how do we actually go and access the values? Well, if we wanted to say print these, for example, well, we could say the length is equal to, and the width is percent %d. And the value we're going to pass in is my rectangle dot length. And that's for the first one. And then we're going to pass in my rectangle dot width. So this dot operator allows us to access the members of this variable, my rectangle, which correlate to the length and the width. Now the only thing that's different about creating one of these things is this struct keyword. Now there's actually a way to get around this and to do that, it's a little funky, but you have to put type def and then down here you say rectangle. So that is how you would get rid of this requirement to put this struct here. It basically allows us to use this rectangle as any other data type. And then this variable here, this value here is actually optional. You could get rid of that if you wanted to like that. So we just created a struct of type rectangle. And here's how we instantiate it. We set it equal to curly braces and we put all those values in there. So this is a, a good start, but we can actually make more complicated things. So for example, let's say we created a another struct for a position. So we would say type def struct position, and this would have an int x and an int y. Now together, these things are kind of useless by themselves. So a position is just a location and a rectangle is just a rectangle. But if you combine them, maybe it could be something like the, the building plans for a house. So this is the size of the house and this is the location of the house, for example. So what you could actually do is you can make a struct of these other structs. So we could say type def struct building plan and inside of here, we could have the first one be the rectangle. And we'll call this uh, 